The death toll from the massive earthquake in Turkey and Syria has now surpassed 30,000 and expected to grow. But the chief of the UN Relief predicts that the final toll will top 55,000. The UN Relief Chief Martin Griffiths arrived yesterday in southeast Turkey at the epicenter of the 7.8 magnitude quake. Tens of thousands of rescue workers from Israel and around the world have desperately been searching for survivors under the rubble, but as days pass, the chances of finding people alive are slim. Meanwhile, the United Nations has warned that at least 870,000 people urgently need hot meals across Turkey and Syria, and that as many as 5.3 million people may have been made homeless in Syria alone. Almost 26 million people have been affected by the quake, and the World Health Organization launched a flash appeal yesterday for $42.8 million in aid to cope with immediate health needs. Meanwhile, an Israeli military hosp field hospital established near the Turkish city of Marash has so far treated around 180 people, including Syrian refugees living in Turkey. They were amongst those wounded in the devastating earthquake. The IDF said that at least 10 Syrian civilians who were in Turkey at the time of Monday's 7.8 magnitude quake and its aftershocks were treated at the field hospital, which was set up in an abandoned medical center building. Israel has deployed around 450 rescue specialists, doctors, nurses, and technicians to Turkish towns and cities to assist in the relief efforts. So far, the IDF search and rescue teams have saved 19 Turkish civilians from under the rubble. There was one boy that was pulled from the rubble four or five days ago. His entire family died. He came with his uncle. We took care of him after we calmed him down. He came to us in moderate condition. I found myself giving him Khalva from the army battle kit, and he loved it. I spoke to him in Arabic. Even his uncle said to me, you, the Israelis, take care of us better than our own people. It touched me deeply. We are here to save lives, and we are ready to go anywhere. I think it's a message to the whole world to present the IDF values and what we are all about. We're now joined in studio by I-24 News correspondent Pia Stekelbach, who just got back from a week in Turkey. Uh, good morning, and I know it's not easy to be a journalist having to cover something that is just so devastating. We can't possibly prepare ourselves as human beings for seeing something like that. What was the experience like for you, Pia? You're right, no one can really prepare themselves for such a situation and it's really hard to describe, although that's what I've been trying to do for the past couple of days, but the extent of this catastrophe is really hard to put in words. When we were in the city of Marash, which is very close to the epicenter of the earthquake, you walk through a street and you really see every second building came down. Every second building came down and you walk past these buildings and to many of them aid hasn't arrived yet or search and rescue teams. Now the time frame is over like it's very very unlikely to still pull people out from under the rubble. I mean we're still miracle, we still see miracles and many of the times it's children who make it out alive still after so many days which is to me having experienced also the cold, the freezing cold. I cannot understand how this is physically possible and it's really miracles everyone who now gets out alive or who at all got out alive after so many hours but when you walk through these streets and you see buildings that were still unattended and you know that there is a great chance that there's still people and you 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 pass them and you think how this is just the this is just too much the buildings are too too many buildings which came down there is just too many cities affected and we also have to talk about the rural areas Right, of course. Of course, there is now aid in the bigger cities. Also, Marash is a big city. We were in Gaziantep, which is also a major city. And then, not even to mention Syria, where there was almost no foreign aid that arrived. And we really saw how important it is that foreign aid arrives to, arrives to these uh, territories. Not only aid in terms of food, water, uh, blankets, but also the search and rescue teams. We've been with the Israeli delegation. The work that these people do is indescribable, also mentally, but also physically. The cold that they're, of course, also experiencing, and they're really out there in the field 12 hours or even more. The search and rescue teams trying to rescue as many people as possible. We hear the numbers. They have managed to do so, especially in the city of Marash, the team from the Home Front Command and also from the uh, United Hatzalah organization and there are, there are cases where they're in touch with the people under the rubble they're using translators where they're talking to these people and after a couple of hours of trying these people just stop answering wow. or they would talk to four people and in the end they only managed to extract one of them mm, wow these are still minutes and moments of hope of course and the people standing around are, are cheering and are so relieved to to see that at least one person has made it out alive one more but you know that 
there are so many, many people who did not make, make it out alive. And also the situation. Already, or even those that maybe are, are still breathing, maybe, also the will chaos. maybe never be found. What was the experience like getting there? I mean, that's another uh, component that we didn't take into account. It was also quite treacherous getting to the scene of the quake. Well, this, this area, southeastern Turkey, many cities are almost inaccessible, and that also makes it very hard for international delegations to arrive there. Of course, flights were delayed or were canceled the, in the hours and days right after the earthquake, and now even people are just on their feet. People are trying to get away if they still can, if they have cars. They try to leave the cities because still there is fear that there still might be aftershocks and tremors. Mm -hmm. It's still a dangerous area and also all the buildings that are affected, that are still standing, but you see the cracks in the wall. If there will be another even minor earthquake, there will be so much more buildings which will come down. So people are out and about, people have been evacuated, people have, have left their buildings, people are on the street. Those who have cars, as I said, they try to get away to other areas in Turkey. But many streets are also inaccessible. You, you don't really know how to get your way around. There's no infrastructure. There's nothing you can buy. There's no car almost you can rent. There's no taxis, of course. So also for us as, as journalists, if we want to talk about that perspective, it was very hard to get along. There was no place to sleep sometimes. It was no, there's no infrastructure anymore. But still, of course, we were in a we were in a situation where we managed to get out of there. I mean, right. we are here now. Yeah, you know, you we are leaving a place behind flight to come home. That big also, disaster. with people being taken into custody, the architects and whatnot, from the buildings that were still intact, from your perspective, did they did they seem like they were strong buildings? I mean, from the outside, they seemed like they were strong buildings there, but you see, like, you, you, you barely see buildings, for example, in the city of Marash that were not affected. You see also these seemingly strong buildings. You would see a group of five, six buildings of the same kind, and one of them has completely gotten down. It was the same building, you were told. I mean, you can't really tell, but that's what people tell you because the building is not identifiable anymore. Right. And these right. buildings have so many people in them because we we're talking about many story buildings, and you were told this is a building that had 160 people in it. And you see that it has completely gotten down, there's nothing left from it, and you can smell the smell of, of, of corpses, basically. It's you can only imagine how many horrible. must Having lived myself there. through 9-11, it is just something that you cannot describe, just ugh, terrible. Pia, thank you very much for sharing, and um, I know it's not easy, it's something you're gonna have to personally process after witnessing something so horrendous. Thank you.